Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. We're going to pick this video up where we left off in the last one. We were in the process of finding um, invariant subspaces for uh, of our three um, with respect to the action of this matrix and polynomials in X, where X represents the action of this matrix. Um, uh, so all polynomials being invariant under the action of, the, of, of them. Okay. So we were to this point, we're in step two, we had done some um, column operations to this matrix, just one column operation even was sufficed in this case, um, um, to the point where we were for sure that row operations could finish us out to get a diagonal matrix. We ended up getting columns here and we factored out common um, factors um, out of the entries. Okay, so let's, Let's just look at an extra note here. This isn't really something we always have to think about yet um, as we're going forward and thinking about what we're doing. It's important to have little notes sometimes. So the diagonal matrix eventually is going to come out to be this, doing some more operations. Maybe we don't need to um, actually go all the way, but maybe we could see that pretty clearly from here. That's about what it's going to be. Okay, so looking at that, um, just think about what the row operations would look like they would move this guy. What's that guy? That guy is the first column right here. And row operations are just, it's just a map on each one of the columns. Um, it's the same map, but you're applying it to each of the columns here. So on the this is going to have a destination. That's going to have a destination. That's going to have a destination. The destination, this is going to be the first column of the um, diagonal matrix. That's going to be the second column, the third column. So taking a look at that, that's exactly what we have here. So this is the first, second, and third column of the diagonal matrix. This right here, notice I have it factored out here. So this is going to end up going to this. It looks the exact same. This guy is going to end up going to this one right here. This guy with this factored out is going to this guy right here. So a little change there. But notice um as <clears throat> so notice that you know scalars pass through so i can naturally just factor these things out and realize that um this is an isomorphism and these really map onto the standard basis vectors of the uh of the codomain um rx um three so a tuples with three polynomials it goes on to that standard basis so what does that mean? That means that uh, uh, there, and R is a isomorphism even, that means where they came from are actually linearly independent. So we can actually decompose R X three by using these as our basis vectors if we want, um, uh, is what that says. So after you fact, so kind of what we just learned is after we factor out these things that are common, what's left over right here, okay? is those are actually form a basis for Rx3. And we're going to be using using those a little bit, all right, as we go forward um, here. So let's name the columns um, that we were looking at. Um, so this one, this one, this one. Now remember what these are. These are the columns after we factored out. So we do, some, we do a column operation. We get to a point where row operations could finish us out and to get to the diagonal. And then we factor um, out what's common. We get three vectors, and those are a basis for Rx3. It's kind of nice that we get a basis that way um, very, very cleanly and quickly there. Um, so um, looking at that, um, we can write down the coordinates of Rx3 um, in tuples of three things. Those three things would be just co the coefficients, the scalar coefficients of these um, vectors and these scalars are going to be polynomials. So think of A, B, and C as being polynomials, but yet they're like coordinates for Rx3. So we're going to represent Rx3 by a, kind of like a skewed coordinate system using these vectors, okay, um, and coefficients of them representing the coordinates. All right, so if we want to minimally assume that Xi minus A is equal to zero, that's like saying we mod out by the image of Xi minus A, xi minus a. So modding out means we're assuming it's equal to zero. This is other wording wording for 
making zero. So say mod out by something. Um, okay, so if we if we assume this is uh, the zero matrix, that's like saying the output, the range is zero. Um, and in particular, the range of xi minus a is going to be equal to the range of this same thing um, where you pre-compose it with an isomorphism. It's not going to change the output, the image space there, um, the subspace that represents the range. So what does that mean? That means the columns that we actually get um, from xi minus a um, X, I minus a of the, with the column operation, what were the columns? Remember what they were? They were P one times X minus one P two and P three times that. So we're going to assume that all of these guys are zero. We're going to mod out by them. We're going to, you know, that's what we're going to, um, be assuming, um, is equal to zero as we go forward. Okay. So how is that going to work? Well, let's kind of, you know, what we're modding out by is actually, going to be a whole um, subspace, if you will, of Rx, but really it's called a, a sub-module um, of Rx3, and it's kind of like the Rx span, so polynomial span. So what does that mean? Take all linear combinations of these with polynomials, like multiples of these. Um, and uh, so that would be like a subspace, it's a sub-module. And then you look at a quotient module, kind of like a quotient vector space, where you're assuming that this guy is equal to zero. Um, and what does that look like? I mean, just think about it component-wise. I mean, in this component, this is gonna um, this is gonna be like zero. In this component, this is gonna be like zero. Well, this component is just like multiples of this guy. And if the multiples of what you're doing is just zero, I mean, then um, you know, in Rx, thinking about um, um, in, in Rx, I mean, this this guy is just going to be gone. It's just going to be um, zero. We're going to be completely ignored. Everything in here, this component is just going to be um, naturally and completely zero when we mod out. In this guy right here, not everything is going to go away to zero, just multiples of um, uh, just multiples of pi will go to zero. Not all of them, just ones that have uh, a factor of x minus one. Okay, um, we'll go to zero. Um, all right, and then here are just things that have factors of, of x squared minus 2x plus 1. Those guys would, would go to 0. Um, this is just another way of notating what we are just talking about. But really, that's just the idea, is that in each of these components, we're going to say this part goes to 0, that goes to 0, that goes to 0. So what doesn't go to 0? Um, say like um, 2p1 wouldn't go to 0 here, right? Because 2 is not a multiple of x minus 1. Um, however, if we had something like x squared plus one, um, yeah, that doesn't, I mean, that doesn't go to zero. It's not, a, but nonetheless, we can actually reduce it, its representation. If you think about it, like x squared plus one, if you divide by x minus one right here, think about this. So x goes into this, um, x times multiple multiply it by that, you get x squared minus x, you subtract, um, and you end up getting um, x, and then you, so, and then you have a plus one, and x minus one goes into that just one time, plus one, so you have x minus one, and then you subtract that off, and you'd end up getting a two. So really, actually, it looks like we end up getting um, x squared plus 1 is, well, let's just think about what this means. x squared plus 1 is equal to a multiple of x minus 1 plus 2. Well, this part's just 0, right? So in other words, another way of representing this is just 2. In fact, every single thing in here is just going to be representable by a remainder a degree zero remainder since this has degree one. So that means just real numbers. So when we mod out by this, in this component, we're actually going to have something of dimension one with just real numbers. Now, the same idea can be applied here, but this is a degree two polynomial. When you divide out by it, your remainders are gonna have degree one. So you're gonna have like, um, you know, like an AX plus B or something like that, you know, something with, or mx plus b, or whatever you want to think about it, you're going to have a 
first degree polynomial and you're going to have two coefficients there. Um, it's going to be a dimension two. It's going to have you like pairs of real numbers. So it's going to be like an R2. There's our R3. R and R2 go together to give you R3. This guy's out of the picture. Boom. So when we're saying that our representation X, okay, um, so X represents our matrix, this is what happens. These guys go away to zero. And what's left over is our three. Okay. It actually kind of comes into, um, comes very nicely. If these are, um, uh, if these are all polynomials, you say a mod X minus one, that just means take the remainder of a, when you divide by X minus one, take the remainder of B when you divide by one, well, remainder is zero. So it's always zero, right? When you divide by one, um, here, right here, it's the same thing. So this will be, um, a degree, um, uh, this would be a, de um, a degree one polynomial, so you get a, a dimension two right there. We're going to keep going with this. We'll take a break right now, and we'll um, and we'll head into the next um, video. Thanks for watching.